Okay, it's engine day. So I've just been down to shore and by sea next to Brighton uh, to Roadcraft UK. I uh, met Brian and uh, extremely knowledgeable and uh, friendly guy. Uh, can't say enough nice things about uh, the setup there and him. And uh, he helped me load the uh, engine into the van here, strapped it all down for its uh, journey back here. So uh, now the adventure really starts and I'm going to get it out of the van onto my engine crane and see what we can do with it. So this is the LS3 engine, all bolted down onto its crate. Uh, I've got a few accessories, starter motor, got my gearbox back there, got a clutch inside, um, mounting plates and things, and a few other parts, um, starter, etc. So uh, that's, that's all good, and uh, we're gonna use the engine hoist here, um, just to go in there, lift it uh, off the deck of the van, and take it into the garage where we can start assembling things. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Uh, gearbox is in, just supported gently on uh, a couple of bits of wood there. Next job to do before we uh, start attempting to get it over the chassis is to fit the gearbox. So uh, this is the Tremec gearbox that I've chosen. And what you need to do is just mount it onto these four, uh, four bolts here. Now, uh, the bolts on the left-hand side have slightly longer shoulders slightly longer bolt and that's because once you've put the gearbox on against this against this face you then have to fit the clutch here so the clutch will just sit in there and and then obviously uh, there'll be the gearbox and then the clutch and then and then the bolt uh, holding it all together so uh, I'll get on with that now The installation just took five minutes longer there um, because the bracket that the slave sits on was just interrupting uh, and hitting a flange here uh, from the gearbox casing. So I just notched that out on instruction uh, from uh, Roadcraft. I said that's absolutely fine. And uh, this then slid into place and I was able to do it all up. So the fitting of the clutch is... Uh, Slave is uh, pretty simple. You need to um, make sure the, the play um, is take, taken up here and then just make sure you've still got five mil to be able to push back to allow for, for wear. So you can see there that uh, I've got five, only five mil of play up to up to there so that's uh, that's just right I uh, just need to lock this off you need to check this uh, five minute play periodically otherwise what happens is the clutch wears it'll end up riding on the clutch and wearing it out um, even more so you just need to allow this five mil okay let's get on with the engine install okay nearly there engines are uh, nearly in position just got it on a downward slope there so I can tuck the gearbox uh, underneath the tunnel there uh, hopefully we'll be missing the fuel pump um, so yeah I just need to just uh, shuffle it over a few more inches and then put the gearbox through the tunnel and then level it off and see what uh, we need to do Okay, so I just stopped the video there just to show you and remind you, uh, you've got to fit these mounting brackets to the engine first um, because it's obviously going to be a lot easier just to drop these onto uh, studs pointing up instead of trying to fanny around uh, uh, fitting the bracket onto the engine and lining up those four holes. Also, uh, the uh, bolts down here will be pretty uh, unreachable uh, if you did it uh, the other way around because it's going to be tucked up uh, behind this bobbin here. So stick it on the engine first and then uh, lower it straight onto the studs. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we're all in. We're all nice and level, uh, which is great. Um, actually, you didn't need to worry about the fuel pump too much because uh, by the time you've leveled everything, there is actually quite a large void in there. I'm quite pleased I just moved it back a little bit from uh, where the yoke is going to be spinning. Um, that's all good. I'm just going to turn. Uh, I think I'm just going to turn this uh, P clip around and uh, have this pipe just running um, a little bit flatter and not at quite such an angle. There's quite a nice large, large space there between the uh, 
gearbox bracket. So I'm just going to make that a straighter, straighter run. So we're all good. Um, not too concerned about this pipe here, but I might just uh, tack another uh, P clip on there just to keep it away. But it's pretty firm, and the trajectory of the um, of the diff is uh, is nowhere near it. Uh, so that will be fine. So we're all good there. Uh, gearbox bracket uh, went on just fine. So uh, drilled and tapped the holes for the gearbox bracket. Uh, so we're all looking good. All nice and secure, all nice and, nice and flat and level. Um, I've just got to take off the headers just to put my one more uh, bolt up in the top there on each side. Um, so that is it. So, you know, a couple of hours work and uh, pretty happy with the result. Okay, uh, now before we go to the next stages, uh, just a note, remember to use your torque chart to torque all these bolts up. Uh, to the correct tension, etc., um, and thread lock where necessary. Right, so the next thing we've got to do is uh, do the alternator and the starter motor and the power steering pipes. Now, we're going to do the power steering pipes first because they are quite difficult, or one particularly is quite difficult. So it's this one with the huge elbow on it. And we need to basically put it up behind here and uh, and do it up into that hole there. Uh, so quite tricky, definitely need to do it now before you think about putting radiators on or or water tanks or anything else. It's, uh, it's a bit tricky. So uh, let's get on and do that. There we go, not too difficult. Uh, so you need to take this water pump off. It's basically four bolts, which you can get to just by rotating the wheel there and that will give you enough uh, clearance then um, to do up the fixing just here and also uh, just to tighten up the one at the bottom there so that's all in there um, shorten the hose slightly got to finish it off with a nice finisher now that we're in the engine bay uh, make it all look good and uniform and the hoses just come around here loop around plenty of room and finish off up here you can't go wrong they're different size um, uh, nuts banjo nuts uh, uh, bolts that go into here I'm just going to drill underneath here and stick um, two P clips facing one hole two P clips facing each way just to support these hoses stop them flapping around and I'm sure that will impress the uh, IVA man so the next job we're doing is the alternator up here now when you first fit the alternator you might wonder why it's wobbling around but as you do up these bolts it actually draws in uh, this spacer here and that will basically uh, tighten up and stop it all wobbling around and obviously another one at the bottom okay so to get the belt around everything you just need to lever on this this tensioner and you should be able to slip the belt around everything like that. And then release. There we go, all done. Next job is to fit the starter motor. So this uh, goes into this area here and two bolts go upwards and secure it into place. I just wanted to draw your attention to this um, connector here, this socket here. This is your crank sensor uh, for a, certainly for a Can-Ems uh, ECU. So uh, just be aware it's tucked right up here. Uh, don't get it confused with any others. I don't think we end up using this one down here. Uh, we do use this sensor for something. I can't remember what at the moment. We'll get to that when we do the wiring. But yeah, just be aware that uh, there is a little um, connection tucked right up here and it will be above the starter. So it's uh, quite difficult to get to once the body's on and everything else. You're going to be putting your hand um, up behind the, the, the starter and uh, pushing the connector in. So um, let's get on and just put this starter motor in. Okay, so that's the starter motor in, all looking good. Now, um, starter motors are affected by heat an awful lot and uh, right next to these headers, um, 
and the exhaust uh, exiting out the side here, it does get extremely hot, crazy hot. Um, it might be worth putting some kind of heat protective uh, um, fitting over there uh, or, or wrapping it in heat protective tape. Um, of course, the downside of uh, putting a little heat protective jacket over it is it does keep it cooler, but any heat it has got will take longer to uh, to to soak away. So, so that that could be a downside. Uh, myself, I'm probably going to wrap this in heat protective tape um, and just just do just do what I can. Some uh, some thick strips around here um, and, and on the on the back end here, just to reflect a, a little bit of the heat and to get another another wide strip right over over the top here. So I'll probably do that uh, later. And these are the terminals you need, uh, I think, for the ignition switch and and oh, alternator or something, maybe. Anyway, uh, it will all become clear when we do the wiring. And those wires will, I think, I think they uh, come out. Uh, the body will be going coming up here and there's a hole in, in, in the body. Uh, so certainly the battery. Oh, yeah, that's that's for the battery. Um, the battery wire will be exiting out here through through a grommet or something out of the body and uh, going to this top terminal so um so yeah so we're all good there and the last job i'm going to do for this video is just rotate this uh, housing around so that it uh, points in the other direction so let's get on with that right so that was a pretty successful day i'm pretty pleased with how everything went engines in no accidents, nice and level, uh, gearbox nice and level, all my uh, tapped holes all lined up, everything went in pretty nicely. Uh, we've added a few accessories to the engine and um, I think uh, we'll, we'll call it successful there before anything can go wrong. Uh, join me on the next video and we're going to be doing some more things, uh, installing the radiator, some water pipes, we'll see you then.